probably the coolest part about uh, um, Go Pro is that you can do the wide lens. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was weird. I, I was using this for uh, a basketball game. I was wearing it. And I didn't have it on the wide. It was on the narrow, so it didn't look good. And it was like filming the floor the whole time. I don't even want to check my email. <laughs> Why not? It's going to be an endless process. Is this thing recording? What? It's red, blinking red. Oh, hi, Pat. Hey, you're back. Hey, Pat. That's fine. <laughs> no, I don't care. I've been a nudist for many, many years. <laughs> Is it wide lens? This is the wide lens. Yeah, so this is the wide lens. So just see how it's gonna it's gonna freeze for a sec while it records. Mm -hmm. Why is it frozen? It's frozen. Okay. Someone's hacking it. Let me turn. Yeah, I stretch. You can see. Did you use a device or just manual? I used O rings. I just used O rings. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know that I was doing this. I burned my dick when I went to the first nude beach I'd gone to out of the country in 1980 and uh, and I burned you know in the winter tropic sun Wait, and so glands? about six yeah I burned I burned the glands uh. yeah and so about six six years later I moved into an, uh, into a house in Berkeley a lovely little house and uh, I was lying on the sun deck one day and I saw a rubber o-ring and I thought I wonder if I have enough skin that I can pull it forward and cover it and I did and I did this for about eight or nine months uh -huh. and one day I was I was masturbating and I wasn't using lubricant, and I wasn't using my left hand. I used my left hand, and and uh, and I found out of like a year or two later that there were hundreds of men doing this in the country. Mm -hmm. But you can see, I have a scar here. There's a scar. I have a scar, and over here, I only have about one third of my frenulum, because the doctor probably scraped it off with his fingernail or cut it or something. But um, yeah. now. I don't use lubricant. I don't need lubricant anymore. I've been liberated from using lubricant. Liberated man. Yeah. Yeah. So I reclaimed the territory a couple of inches. So whatever. Now you have a little historic documentary. Is uh, that something that the people... Uh, that men. I know. I uh, mean, uh, like in your... You guys have that organization. The it's a separate well, group. It's a separate group, and they vary from city to city. Right. There's so so there's Norm National Organization Never restoring men. Yeah. yeah. And they uh, have a lot of members. But Ron, Ron Lau, who makes the TLC Tugger, which is the device, has over thirty thousand customers. And there's so there's many more people who are restoring. You know, right? Men. Men. Yeah. There aren't women restoring because they're not cut in our culture. People with penises who've been cut. Persons. Let's be real politically correct. <laughs> can a woman recreate it though if she got, did get circumcised? There is. So I guess women can. No, no. So, so once, with, once the clitoris is gone. Well, uh, well not true. Yeah. Not true. So most of the clitoris is actually buried in the body, right? What you only see is usually like the, the like glands. The glands. The glands but then the there's a little bit of shaft. And then the foreskin. But that's yeah. a separate part. Yeah. Separate part. Like the yeah. la inner labia, right? That's that's like. So the, the foreskin on a man's penis actually gives you more pleasure or whatever? Most yeah. of the nerves are fine it, sensation. It's like the inner labia, yeah. basically. It's, it's like, kind of the, inner, yeah, it's like kind of the top of it. Actually, if you put the camera down, and I, I'll give you a little exercise. Tongue and rub the top of your mouth. Like the, in, like, all the way, the cavity. Uh-huh. No, like... Yeah, take the tongue. Go, you yeah, know, buckle it back, yeah. Just, you know... And then do that to the bottom of your mouth, under the tongue. There's a huge difference. In like the top yeah. is more sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The top of the t of the mouth. <laughs> Are you doing no, right? the frenulum is the more sensitive underneath. That's the frenulum. They cut mine when I was a baby. What? They cut my uh, tongue. They cut your tongue. The the frenulum. They cut the frenulum of your tongue. Yes. Why would what they the do that? What the hell did they do that for? Uh, some babies are born with. Uh, like oh, tongue tie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So but it kind of, no. sometimes it, they claim it interferes with breastfeeding. No, the whatever. frenulum, the frenulum means the break or the bridle in Latin. And it still survives in Spanish. It's the freno, uh -huh. los frenos del coche. So you're born with four frenulums. 
Yes, the frenulum of the upper lip, the frenulum of the, t of the tongue, and the frenulum of the lower lip, and the frenulum of the glands, of, right. the, of the penis, right. of the foreskin. And it's the frenulum which keeps the foreskin in its proper place, covering the, uh, the glands and the uh, urethra, the urethral yeah, opening. The same thing the with the lips. Yeah. They, they keep your lips, you know, from going yeah, <laughs> side yeah, and one sideways speaks also, and they keep them closed. One speaks also in English mm. of an unbridled tongue. Because the bridle of the tongue, which, which which gives you control of the tongue, is the frenulum. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's um, and in Spanish there's this thing, una lengua desenfrenada, is an unbridled tongue, because you can't control it. You know, it flops its verbal load everywhere and anywhere, without any control. But that's that's the end of the game. So, all uh, the uh, they took what probably two thirds of my frenulum when they cut me. Mm. Mm. And uh, I see young men nowadays who are two generations behind me. Who they've taken everything. They have taken everything. I have a friend in Boston who, when he was in his adolescence, uh, would he, when he jacked off, he would his skin would rip because the skin he was growing and the skin was so tight they had taken all the slack from him. He had no slack left, and so when he was masturbating, sometimes he would rub too hard because he was desperate to get off. Like all of us are cut. And, uh, and the skin would rip and tear. And Why don't they use lubricant? We who are circumcised will use lubricant for the rest of our lives. Except I don't need it for masturbation. I don't need it for masturbation because I've created uh, a pseudo skin or, a, or, or uh, a fake skin. So I don't need it. But in order to penetrate... Do you think that the foreskin is also better f for the female experience? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I just I was censored on the intactivist internet by one of the more prominent activists. I'm not going to mention any names because he's a valiant man. But I said, and I said before I typed this out, that what I had to say was vulgar, and it was intentionally vulgar, and I said that most American women who have circumcised husbands don't realize that they, that they have sandpapered pussies and their boyfriends have hamburgered assholes because the circumcised man has to shove harder and he has to, it's, it's, um, he needs, he needs violence. In order he needs to the be friction, the real. He needs the friction. Really? The, yeah, he needs friction. And the intact male is greasy, slimy, natural, yeah, whatever. It's, it's like the mucosal, when in, in intact people have sex, it's mucosal tissue touching each other. Yeah, it's mucosal tissue. And the woman's mm -hmm. mucosal tissue uh, has not been removed from her, yeah. but nonetheless, she has to deal with the circumcised husband, who's shoving hard. It's dry and skin. And he can't dry. tell, but she would be able to tell that it's not as. Well, well, most women, American women, don't know because they don't have intact husbands or intact boyfriends. Yeah. But once they find out, um, they would leave their husband. They won't leave their husband. They won't leave. <laughs> that's their what husband. Moses that's Maimonides. Uh, that's what said. Moses Maimonides said. Direct quote that. Yeah, that, direct uh, quote that once a woman has had real sex, she ain't going to go back. Once, once, once the boy's been off the farm, you can't. When you've been to Paris, you can't send me back to the farm. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's true. I mean, I was trying to explain the three. There were three teenagers that stopped at Civic Center Park uh -huh. in Denver. Uh -huh. Three teenage boys, and they were kind of miffed about, you know, because they're circumcised. And I went up to them. And I was very just in a good mood, and I was very friendly. And I said, "How are you, boys? You know, blah blah blah." And I said, um, and I just opened the conversation. I said, "Those of us who were circumcised." are going to have to buy lubricant for the rest of our lives. And they knew what I was talking about. Yep. And I said, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, the so intact even when you have sex? Yeah, yeah. When we have sex, when they masturbate, whatever. Even if it's no condom? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The condom is... Well, I guess it depends, I mean... No, no, the condom, the condom, you know, you need, you need lubricant with the condom, period. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, if you're intact, yeah, yeah. you need lubricant. Uh -huh. But the you know, the uh, the circumcised male needs lubricant with or without a condom. He needs lubricant, period. So um, I told the boys, I said, let me just give you an example. The intact male um, doesn't need to knock on the door. He doesn't have to have his partner go down on him or spit on his hand or anything. The intact male doesn't have to knock on the door. He doesn't have to grab for the astroglide and have the goddamn bottle fall underneath the bed. The intact male slips into the vault and he claims the booty. <laughs> and these kids, these white boys were just, because American youth have taken up black slang, and they were just giggling all over themselves because they knew what I was talking about. And this is true. I mean, I've discovered with my relationships with intact males, that, you know, I, I meet a guy or he's a steady boyfriend or something, and we go home, we have sex a couple of times, and we fall asleep. 
and in the middle of the night, the thief sneaks back into the ass. He slips into the vault, and you don't feel it until it's already in there because he's a greasy, slimy motherfucker performing all of nature the way we're supposed to perform, and he's supposed to be able to slip in and steal the booty. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. You know, and it's like, yeah, yeah. it is. It's absolutely wonderful. To give an anecdote, when I, I flew, I just flew in from Chicago, right? And, you, you know, you have to take out all your fluids and put them in one, one bag or whatever. So I took out my toothpaste, yeah. my red red blood uh, paint you know mm. and but i left the lube in the bag so i figured they're, they're not going to make me take that out you know <laughs> so sure enough it goes through the, the you know the x-ray or whatever and they 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 see liquids on the screen water-based things on the screen they didn't mention it to me <laughs> they didn't mention it <laughs> they're not about to pull out a, t a tube of astroglide and be like whose is this <laughs> <laughs> oh i've heard That's stories surprising. about men who have cock rings you know metal cock rings on them. On them when they yeah, go through the, yeah. go through the <laughs> security. <laughs> they strip them down and they find this cock ring on them. Yeah. That's terrible. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, I, piercings I, won't, I won't go through that secure. I won't go through um, the, mm -hmm. the, the x-ray thing. Because I have, I have a defibrillator here. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the doctor told me, no listening to cell phones with my left ear. Uh, no, uh, hmm. no, no being x-rayed at the airport or anything because it could disturb the, the defibrillator. And defibrillator is, is basically, it's like a... Um, pacemaker, but a pacemaker is there to speed up the heart if it slows down. The defibrillator is to slow down a heart that I have tachycardia, which is a speedy heart. Oh, because my, my grandma has um, a fit, what's it called, a fib? A fi de defibrillator. It's a defibrillator. This is what it is. It's a defibrillator. Are you talking about her condition? Yeah. Atrial fibrillation? A yes, atrial fibrillation. Is yeah. that what you have? That's what I have, yeah. But mm -hmm. they gave her a pacemaker so that her heart doesn't slow down too much. That's... A defibrillator. It's another name. It's a, but the pacemaker that that slows the heart down is the defibrillator. But the one you have is what? It's, it's a defibrillator. It's to slow down the heart. Well, because I think the one that my grandma has is to um, speed, to it, speed up. it up. That's a pacemaker. Yeah. So That's why do they give her a pacemaker if she has atrial fibrillosis where her heart beats? Because it's in a regular beat. Mm -hmm. It's in a regular beat speeds up, slows down, but it's supposed to beat at more or less a regular, a regular Can't they uh, have a pacemaker or a fibrillator or whatever you call it that could do both, like speed it up and slow it down if it needs to? God only knows what they're going to goose us with, you know. <laughs> 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 whatever. I need to get ready. I've got to have Okay. Got to yeah. Right, you got to get I got to play. Yeah, and I'm having a sandwich because heaven knows how. Th my, my friend, the um, shade tree mechanic, said, and I need to drive the car for about 45 minutes mm -hmm. after it's after uh, the uh, battery's been jumped. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I see you got so. four gen pamphlets, huh? Yeah, I do. This group is trying to... Um, Take over the world. Fund research to regenerate foreskins. And I just read an article about this group that's um, working on regenerating whole penises, and they've been working on rabbits. But I don't know, like... How many people would that benefit? <laughs> I don't know if it's like growing a penis from an embryo stage, you know, like from whole, or I think it's sort of like a kind of backwards trying to construct but there's one a from scratch kind of thing. I think it's different. Really? John, I don't think there's it's a missing factor here. And I have friends who are very much into foraging. Mm -hmm. The guy up in Chico. Mm -hmm. And even if we were to get a foreskin back, and we get all the sensation. All the stages of life that we've been through oh, yeah, no doubt. are not part of that structure. So we've gone through like a time machine in which we were warped of our natural development. So, um, yes, it'd be great to have all of that sensation again. Memories, new experiences, oh, yeah. the maturation. Yeah, process. going through puberty with, with your whole penis. You know, exactly. What, what, what is that like? Well, <laughs> maybe I could take hormones. Take some testosterone. Listen, there was a drag, there was a drag group. Get my foreskin back. There was a drag group in San Francisco for a while called the Hormones. W-H-O-R-E-M-O-A-N-S. <laughs> so you're yeah. saying that when you've been deprived for so long of your foreskin, then you don't uh, even can't even feel how good it would be? No, we will, if they, this foraging thing works, we will be able to 
we'll be able to feel, but we won't have gone through the process of growing up intact oh. and having the experiences that create the completely fulfilled adult oh. or yeah. individual. And growing up with, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you So know, you, you missed your childhood. Your youth, you know. Our youth, Your yeah. prime, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll support it. Anything that makes us step forward uh, is progress, but we have to look behind the facade of success and realize that some things can never, ever be completely restored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those who expect that are going to be disappointed. Oh, and there's a lot of people who expect that. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> I've do. I've been trying to fend them off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but couldn't it be if you can restore your foreskin, then it would be okay to do circumcision? Wouldn't you be okay with That's that? That's an interesting uh, point because a lot of a lot of parents say like, oh. I'll just circumcise him, and if he doesn't like it, he could just restore or, or just grow back. You know? No, because if you um, if you uh, if you circumcise someone who's been restored, I mean, a friend of mine sent me um, uh, has a film from Sweden about a couple who went through a sex change. Mm -hmm. The man became a woman, the uh -huh. woman became a man, so to speak, and <laughs> then they decided they didn't like it and they want to go back to what they were and get married again. And it just, but the thing is. You cannot expect a man to be a woman. It's fake. It's not going to be real. You know, when he becomes a supposed she, um, she's never going to lactate. She's not going to menstruate. She's not going to have a real orgasm the way a woman has an orgasm. She's not going to go through the mental processes of evaluating boyfriends. Of, I mean, women are you know, they're their own world, and men are their own world, and you cannot expect one to become the other. It just doesn't happen. And the closest thing you get to that is what Hida Valoria was talking about, the intersexual at, uh, at the conference in Boulder, that uh, the, w the, w the, the world about sex change and, uh, and intersexes is divided basically into those two things. Yeah, but and, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not like a binary, though. No. But, but uh, you know, the, the intersexes come out of the womb, and that's the way they are. And largely, they are either one gender or the other, you know, in terms of their, their, their genetics. But, uh, well, but there was a very good article in a recent issue of uh, the National Review, which is William, Bu William F. Buckley's All Right Wing magazine. Mm -hmm. And it was about about the supposed sex changes, these are not sex changes. They are cosmetic appearances of a sex change. But they're not real. They're not real and they never will be real. You're about okay. six blocks from, from well, the tennis court, the basketball court, whatever you want to call it. Okay, cool. And I'm pleased that you came dressed the way you did because I thought, oh my God, this is a Beverly Hills Jewish, Jewish American princess. And um, and you're very natural and very very easygoing. I like that. What did you think I was gonna look like? I thought you were going to be all spiffed up. Um, you know, uh, I just I thought you <laughs> were gonna like be a, all spiffed up. A pocketbook really, or something. What? Like a purse or something. Yeah, I just thought you were going Sand, to be like high heel sandals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any mini skirt. Yeah. No, and you came you came <laughs> in old blue jeans and you look comfortable. <laughs> and, you know. I am so. hot though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need, you need you need shorts. It's Do you have yeah. shorts for the basketball stuff. Yeah, I should change, huh? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to get the stuff out of the car? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, and I should get um, things to hold my glasses on, you know, like the lanyard. Oh, yeah. You want to use this? <laughs> Battle scar. Yeah. Uh oh. She's stuck. Just hold on. They, they made it sound like it was like a huge emergency. Yeah. She's gonna die. <laughs> I know who the brat is. <laughs> wow, you're so good. You didn't even start yet. Okay, this is a good uh, playground. Yeah, it's nice. Huh? It's a nice court, nice basket.
Why are you dancing like that? <laughs> Just messing around. Say go easy. I'm not even really guarding you. Oh, nice. You got it. Don't. Wow! Is that luck? No. <laughs> you don't have any arc on your shot. It's very flat. <laughs> 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 it's weird wearing this thing on my head though. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he stopped going after something stunted my growth. Could be very simple. What about your parents? Are they tall? So it's probably genetics. Genetical. Okay, shoot at the <laughs> half court. Ah. Let me do it now. But you did it before, no? Oh. No, I did this one. Oh, you did that one. Yeah. I'm gonna do half court. Wow. My thing almost <laughs> fell off. <laughs> really? Oh. My turn. <laughs> now you can go in the go to the half court. Do the hook shot. You wanna hook that? Yeah. It'll be wild. <laughs> Waste of time. It's looking blue. Now it's looking red. Now it's recording. <laughs> it is? Yep. This is a nice grass. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what you want to do is go down like this. Totally curl your body. So you roll off the right shoulder and down across. Diagonal across the back. Oh. So I'll just demo a little bit. <laughs> that, was, that was not smooth. I gotta, I gotta Is that karate? Huh? What is that karate? It's basically. No, it's parkour. Which is the art of moving. Oh. It's like people jumping across things, on scaling walls, and jumping over obstacles. Oh, wow. Do you do that normally? Uh, it's, it's pretty much all I can do. <laughs> Where'd you I try, learn? I try to learn how to jump over stuff too. Where'd you learn that? The internet. Uh. It's good to know. So like if you jump, if you're jumping off of something that's like six feet high or something. You gotta roll. And you land, you do the roll, it, it, it helps your... Uh, so it doesn't hurt. Right, right. 
transferred the energy into rolling instead of... Ah. Uh, it's pretty handy. That's cool. There are people who like, I see like YouTube videos, people jumping from like 15 feet. They jump and then they roll like two or three times to get off the moment. Kind of oh, wow. And they have so like they special could... shoes too that are real grippy. Oh. <laughs> Don't make me do it. <laughs> it's probably not good for you to do it that many times. Practice. Nice practice. But it's probably bad for your health. No. Why is it? Why is it? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. No. You can jump. You kind of put one up, put your legs over, like, the side. I, I, I need practice on this. You wouldn't be able to jump over that bench. Huh? You don't think you could jump over? Ah, uh, it's a little high for me. What about the fence? That's yeah. even higher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's but there's a way to jump over fences that are high, you know. Yeah. You kick off of it, you know. What about the trash can? So like, if you look at every object in this playground, or whatever, you could like jump off of it in a cool way. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Do you think I would be able to learn how to dunk if I learned how to do that? No, I don't know. <laughs> you would learn how to roll after you come off of the, <laughs> of the layup or something. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we got everything? I think so. Yeah, I just got my bottle. For Is it recording? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I practice a lot in... Uh, Spain, I set up a bench like this high. Oh, really? And I tried to jump over it so that basically I would, it would look like this. <laughs> um, but it was hard. Then I tried to jump it so I looked like this. You uh, know, and I set up a camera to the side to take video to see my jumps. How did it look? Huh? Did it look cool? Yeah, and then all the dogs were like, came over and they were like watching like, what was going on. <laughs> the dogs? Yeah, they had a bunch of dogs in this farm. <laughs> Were they big or little? There was one that was like this big. Oh wow. Big like woolly white dog. Like, kind of like a St. Bernard almost, but oh. totally white. And it would like grab your hand and its jaws and like wrestle with you. Really? But won't bite you, you know? That's scary. But put like a little bit of pressure. You know, it's like a little bit of pressure and it's just like... Argh. Oh my god. And I'm like, oh no. That's gross. Like, try to wrestle with it. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. You get used to it. You like dogs? They like me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they like them too. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of nice having other living creatures around, you know, instead of just humans and concrete. Yeah, trees. I know. Some trees. <laughs> it looks like a dating dating website. Yeah. Uh, okay, Cupid's not. I mean, you can go on dates and stuff, but it's more like more chill. It's more like open-ended. Yeah, it stinks. Dumpsters. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the kind of dumpster you would go diving in? No, in New York they don't have. They don't really have dumpsters. They, they put the trash and trash bags on the street. Ah. Uh. Okay, we can probably. So you don't go dumpster diving nowadays? I went in Denver, the Adwala juice company, you know? Yeah. They have a I'm distribution center. And they have a dumpster. It's pretty easily accessible. Oh, really? It's filled with juice bottles. I mean, it's incredible. And they were full of juice? Mm -hmm. Why are they throwing it out? Was it expired? No, what happens is they uh, deliver. And they deliver to the store anything that didn't sell. They take that. And they 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 uh, give them credit for it. Uh. That's how it works. So they're not necessarily expired. Sometimes there's expired stuff.
where it's, you know, generally it's not as hard. Yeah. So I should probably look that up to see if there's, a, there's one here in New York. There's like a, you know, the Palm Juice Company. Yeah. P-O-M. P-O-M or, or Bolt House Farms. There's another juice company. Uh. They have a distribution center in, in Brooklyn, New York. Well, it's kind of tricky because you have to trespass. You've got to slip, slip under a gate or climb a huge concrete wall. Uh, I've heard people have gotten arrested. I mean, one time, one time I was like in the dumpster. It's a huge dumpster. It's in it. And I hear people coming and I duck. And then it was one of my friends. And I was like, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so, so you could get arrested? Yeah, it's stressful. Mm. But I've never been arrested before. Dumpster diving. Yeah. You could just say, "Oh, I thought I was at home or something." <laughs> well, well a, how did I get I'll here? Put me in a center. <laughs> Got me down to a gurney and, and inject things in me. Here, this is the taco uh, shop. <laughs> Feel anything though, right? No, unless it was an emergency or something. Yeah. So, in like an anarchist world, will people be able to steal? I mean, would they? I mean, I don't think you would have this kind of private ownership of things. Uh, See, the whole the whole idea of this society is that this is private, private property, private property. The people who lived here were enslaved, slaughtered genocided away and yeah. now the other people are that was my property, my house, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, it's a different it's a different society. Yeah. If you share land in common, you know, like people do in many places still, you know. You you, tend, you, you don't destroy it usually because you all depend on it. You know. Yeah. It's the it's the enclosure of space, the privatization of space, the ownership of space that